All right, as we all step off together into hour number three tonight, this is going to be really, really interesting. Once in a while, and I get to see lots and lots of new books, a lot of new book releases sent my way all the time, both physically in the mail and, of course, on the electronic desk. But this one immediately caught my attention. And there are several reasons, not the least of which is the general subject matter. The book is called Alien Interview, a book based on personal letters, commentary, and transcripts provided by Matilda O'Donnell McElroy. Editing and footnotes by Lawrence R. Spencer, author of The Oz Factors. This book is published by Lulu. Again, it is called Alien Interview. The complete and unedited, top-secret transcripts of a series of interviews with an alien survivor of the notorious Roswell UFO crash conducted at the Roswell Army Airfield, 509th Bomb Group, in July and August of 1947. This is potentially a blockbuster of a book. It should be. Let's hope it gets there. And right now, let's say hello to Lawrence R. Spencer, the editor of the book. Hi, Lawrence. Hi, Jeff. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Thanks uh, very much for consenting to be on the program tonight. This uh, this is a big topic. And let me just preface our conversation by saying, some months ago, I gosh, might even close to a year ago, I had a, a very interesting man, former law enforcement officer up in the Pacific Northwest on the program, who played a number of excerpts from audio cassettes that he had recorded with a woman who was at Roswell when it all happened. And she has passed on now, as I recall, some years ago, maybe six, seven, eight years ago. But uh, he's bringing these tapes forward and played them on the air. It was amazing to, uh, to hear his story. And this is apparently the legacy of another young woman who served at Roswell. Now, this one, and I'll read this again, the complete and unedited top-secret transcripts of a series of interviews with an alien survivor of the notorious Roswell UFO crash conducted at the Roswell Army Airfield 509th Bomb Group in July and August of 1947. A remarkable premise for a book. This should be an astounding read. I, I can't wait to get hold of it. All right, now... Uh, Lawrence, tell us, first of all, just briefly, we don't have a lot of time, but your background in terms of any interest in the, in the UFO, ET, uh, aliens crashed uh, story, or Roswell in general. Uh, what was your interest in it before this story kind of fell into your lap? Well, um, as I mentioned to you the other day when we spoke on the phone, uh, I came upon this material very accidentally and circumstantially. Uh, back in 1996, 97, 98, I was doing research for the first book I wrote, which is called The Oz Factors. It's a book uh, essentially investigating the history of uh, logic or thinking in Western civilization. And part of my research uh, led me into investigations of a wide variety of subjects, uh, uh-huh. historic and modern and so forth. Somewhere along the line, uh, I had read several hundred books. I had talked to lots of people uh, in the process of gathering and evaluating information. And kind of by by a circuitous coincidence of accidental referrals and so forth, someone mentioned to me, I don't even know who it is now, uh, mentioned to me that they had heard there was a lady who had been, actually several ladies, who had been nurses at uh, Roswell Airfield back in 1947, and they thought that they knew where uh, one of them was. So one thing led to another, and sort of as a lark, uh, I called up um, information directory in this little town of Montana where this lady was supposed to live and found a number that matched the name I was given and called up, and uh, she answered the phone. Uh, Unbelievable. Amazing. Just like about as accidental as you could get. Anyway, my, to answer your question more directly, my interest was just sort of to find out if there were anyone around that I could talk to who uh, could in any way verify that uh, extraterrestrial life 
forms had been actually contacted or mm-hmm. if there had been UFOs recovered, that sort of thing. Just as a kind of a general interest, uh, I don't I don't have any particular background in UFO research. I'm certainly not in any way, shape, or form an authority on the subject. I'm not interested in becoming an authority. But uh, she, I asked her point blank. You know, I, first of all, I explained to her what I was doing and the nature of the research I was doing for my book. And was she was she reticent to speak with you at all? Well, or did she... yeah. Well, I asked her. You know, I've been told that you may know something about. Uh, the events that occurred at Roswell, um, and she said, basically, I can't tell you anything about that except to say, yes, I was around there at that time, but uh, I'm sworn to secrecy, you know, in so many words, and mm-hmm. can't really discuss it with you. So, hmm. anyway, we had a very cordial conversation, and ex- I explained to her my book, and uh, after the book was completed, I mailed her a copy of the book, uh, which I learned... Uh, almost 10 years later that she had actually read and uh, was the reason for her sending me the, the materials that she mailed to me uh, 10 years later. Uh, by 10 that years. Time, she was 83 mm-hmm. years old by mm-hmm. the time I received the material. Mm-hmm. So uh, when I received the material, uh, having only spoken to this woman once for about maybe 20 minutes, uh, I had sort of forgotten all about it, actually. That's a long uh, time, 10 long years. Long time, yes, absolutely. Yeah. So I was, uh, needless to say, I was surprised. Uh, moreover, the package came from Ireland, and when I had spoken to her, she was living in, in Montana. So when I received the material, I opened the envelope, and it had contained um, some bunch of handwritten notes, some typed notes, and some transcripts that appeared to me to be government-type, top-secret. I mean, what do I know about top-secret? documents I, I know nothing were they were they stamped top secret at all they were they were typewritten across mm-hmm. the the top i've i've tried to replicate them in the book as mm-hmm. as closely as possible mm-hmm. by the way uh did how many pages approximately were sent to you in that one packet well uh everything that is contained in the book uh what i did let me explain what i did with the material uh first of all i i read the whole thing um, i and my first inclination was, since uh, you know this is all very foreign and bizarre to me, mm-hmm. uh, my first inclination was to start trying to find out where this lady was and contact her, uh, you know, and find out from her more about it. Um, and why did she send it to me? And what what is this really anyway? And so forth. So every bit of investigation that I undertook to to verify that she existed or that she was an actual person uh, or she was the same person that I spoke to on the phone. Right. Uh, every bit of it resulted in a, in a dead end for me. I couldn't verify the factuality of any of it. So at that point, you know, I'm not a private investigator or anything, but at that point I, I started thinking, well, you know, this could easily be a hoax. This could, this sounds a little like the majestic 12 documents that I'd read about that were received anonymously in the mail. Mm-hmm. Uh, and subsequently, have people have spent years and years and years trying to authenticate the documents and prove that they're factual or not. Mm-hmm. All that thing. I, I believe you know the. Oh yes. The fellows involved in that. Yes. Um, the, yes. The words. Anyway, yes. so mm-hmm. I, I agonized uh, in the letters that she sent, including included with the document. She asked me to publish the documents, and I think you'll agree when you read the letter. Um, that her reasons are very compelling. Uh, and after having read the documents myself, I thought that the content of the documents was uh, extraordinarily interesting, to say the least. Uh, actually, more than interesting, kind of uh, revolutionary, at least from my point of view. So I decided um, a couple of things. One, first of all, I decided that I would just... Uh, publish the, the material verbatim. I would copy it verbatim in, in the text of the document. And then for the sake of clarification, I would edit the documents and put them into kind of what seemed to me to be the logical sequence, because they weren't really in any logical sequence except for the, man, the transcripts themselves, which are dated. Um, the rest of the material is not dated. They're just her personal notes and observations or explanations uh, about the material. So I undertook the job of being an